Hey cheaters, here's a quick tutorial on how to use our no code editor and our powerful new semantic targeting to build an automation that creates images using Leonardo.ai and uploads them to Twitter. So I'm going to just run the automation first so you see how it works and explain how it does that and then I'll show you how to build it using no code tools easily. So let's file run. If your browser is not open, it's going to open your browser and send it to Twitter. And the first step is finding the post button. If you'll notice in the top left hand corner, it is flipping through images in parallel. This is using Atlas One, our new multimodal model that takes images or text as input. And we've trained it specifically to solve the hardest problems for automation. It uses this to build something called semantic targets, which are robust to even future design changes because it understands the underlying intent of the target. So so for, for example, if you change the color of a button or if you even change the entire design of the website, it'll still work. And what it's doing here is it's now using G it's using GPT-4 to search the screen and generate a social post. And now it's gonna post it to the page. There we go. Okay, so now that you've seen how it works, let me go over how to build the automation. We're gonna start with a new cheat from scratch. The first step is a semantic click. I'm going to click the post button and we're going to describe this semantic step more explicitly. We can choose to use the auto-generated description but I recommend being as descriptive as possible because sometimes you might have two buttons that are also similar. A blue post button um, with white text that as post. And we can be, if we, I recommend being as description, descriptive as possible because that'll help it be as accurate as possible. You might have noticed that it was also printing out the probabilities up in the left corner. So if you have two targets that are very similar, you'll see that it actually goes out to decimal places. So if you're more descriptive, that helps you discern between two targets. Okay, so let's just see what this does and run it. And the first step is a semantic click. So you can see it's now searching for the post button and it clicked it. Cool. All right, next, let's just go ahead and click this uh, image button. So I'm gonna go back to our no code editor, do a um, click and choose this. And we're going to describe it as a, let's see, a small button with a blue image of mountains. And it's going to describe it for you as an initial guess, but often that's not really that great. Sometimes it, it does actually do pretty well and you can leave it, but I recommend improving it as much as possible, being as descriptive as you can if you want. And then so, let's see. Click that and go to the next step. Now we want to click this button. Add a click. Click there. I'm going to describe this. Uh, see, it described it as a, a folder, but I want to describe it as a small yellow folder icon, just to be a little bit more descriptive. I'm going to go back here. Then next, once this is clicked, I want to type something. So I want it to actually go to our uh, install folder if we're not already there. So we're going to go here and use key press. And then in key press, there's a special option here called current directory. And then I'm going to delete this so it doesn't type anything else. And I'm going to add another key press to press enter. Let's say return. Okay. And once we're in the current directory, I wanted to click down here. So I'm going to add a click. And 
let's describe this as yeah, it says file name. Let's say um, a text input for the file name. Text input box for the file name. And you can see all these targets are all in simple language. So there's no code involved here which means that this solves a problem that breaks all other automation tools like UiPath and Microsoft, where if the service updates their design or even completely changes the design of their website, you have to go back and rebuild the automation. In this case, it's actually gonna be able to search the screen and intelligently understand the underlying intent of your automation to keep working. So it's kind of robust, future-proof, um, much less brittle than all other automation services. Okay, so now, once we've clicked here, next I want to do some key press action. Let's have it say uh, generated.png because this is the, uh, the file name that um, our stable diffusion generator uses. Um, actually, let's use, let's add stable diffusion before that. Stable diffusion. And let's reroute this. Here and let's route this one here. Okay. So let's create our image first. Let's describe the image prompt as um, a bunch of robots having a party. Okay. And then key press generated.png and let's do key press again turn all right so let's at this point let's just see how far we get we've got done a bunch of steps I just want to see what's happening um, let's go back and run this and you can also save it between steps generating the image now. Ah, I generated an image, cool. And this is as far as it gotten, so let's add another step to click the what's happening section. that says what is happening and then let's generate a post using GPT form okay. and let's say um, a social post Once that post is generated, let's let's just see what it does because it might like change the layout of the screen. So let's run how far we get from here.
generate the image. It takes a little bit longer. Image has been generated. Clicking what is happening. And now we type some post stuff. Cool. All right. As a final step, all we have to do is click post. So let's go over here. go and see what happens. Actually, I think I picked it for Twitter. We need to click twice, so I'm just going to add one more just in case. Post. Awesome. Here we go. Moment of truth. Opening Twitter. Clicking post next. Semantic targets in parallel. It actually runs, uh, you might notice it's running through many different images right there and uh, very quickly. And that's because it's running them in parallel on our server using Atlas One. This means that even low-end laptops, even if you don't have a graphics card, it'll still work. This is also part of the reason why it's taking a while for us to scale the beta up to all our customers. Should be mostly scaled up in the next few weeks, I think. Okay. Let's go to what is happening. Now oh, there's the new image. And that animation. And finally, let's do the post button. And then one more for Twitter. There it goes. And we're done. Pretty cool. So this makes it as easy as possible for completely non-technical users to build automations using our no-code editor. You can also use Project Atlas to generate all these automations. Project Atlas has access to our entire internal library. Or you can also use something called the Semantic Recorder. And so stay tuned for that tutorial, which basically allows you to perform the action manually yourself. Cool stuff. Thanks, cheaters.